Yes. Okay. How old were you when we first uh, got to know each other? You were a teenager then, weren't you? Yeah. I know this guy since he was uh, a, a very, very young man on Staten Island. He is now a dad himself and very much involved with the high school that his son attends. And um, he, if any of you remember the youth forum where the kids invented the robotic device that climbed up the pole for emergencies, that, that is because I'm asked about that everywhere I go. Well, this is the gentleman, one of the gentlemen, Kevin's in the back as well, uh, who are responsible for training all these kids. And uh, he's involved at the high school level. So you may pick up a lot of tips if that's the level that you are interested in. Uh, this is Bob Roches, K-A-2-P-B-T, and he's got two young high school students with him uh, who he will introduce, and I know you're going to get good ideas. He supplies me with some of the best youth uh, forum speakers that I've had, so he knows how to do it. Okay, Bob? Okay. So just by raising a hand, anyone here involved in school board, serve on a school board, How about, besides my crew, anybody from New Jersey? Wow. I didn't expect that. <laughs> okay. Did you know that New Jersey, being only 8,000 square miles, has over 600 distinct school districts and school boards? And if you figure there's an average between 5 and 11 um, members per school board, that means it's like 4,200 school board members in New Jersey. So it's almost like, why aren't you on the school board? <laughs> so the real title to my presentation is The Rewards of Serving on Your Local School Board. So as Carol was saying, my name is Rob K2PBT. And I was originally licensed in April of 1982, so that puts me about 34 years now. And currently I live in White Township in Warren County, New Jersey. It's a little <coughs> farming community uh, up in the northwest corner of New Jersey. And as Carol said, I'm originally from Staten Island. And every time I get excited and my Staten Island accent comes out, all my friends in New Jersey kid me about that. <laughs> so uh, I moved uh, up, to, uh, up to Warren County right in the uh, 1996 era. And as Carol said, uh, very young. Uh, I was a college student at the time when we were members of a local radio club there and we worked on a few projects together. And I always loved the opportunity to show off 80s hairstyles. <laughs> you bet. So these are actual screenshots from some uh, news coverage. Uh, if you go on YouTube and search for the BB2MGP, I'm sure you'll find them. But this was for the SARAX-2 mission. It was the second time an astronaut was up in the space shuttle. And it was actually the first time it was a coordinated effort to have that astronaut talk to uh, students in schools. And uh, the guy with all the hair there with the glasses on standing next to Carol is actually me, if you can believe that. <laughs> the other two guys, I have no idea. <laughs> So, as far as my school board career, I'm a, I'm a school board member. I was appointed to the Warren County Technical School Board in uh, 2002. Uh, there was an opening, it was advertised, I applied, and I was excited about it for, for two reasons. Number one, uh, by my, my DNA, I'm a maker. So I like building things, I like people who uh, you know, work with uh, construction, electronics, metalworking, just about anything that, uh, that involves building stuff. And my son was going to the school at the time. So Warren County Technical School started out as a Votech, but what we like to say, it's not your grandfather's Votech. So it's a, choice, it's a choice high school within Warren County as an alternative to the regional high schools. Uh, the type of student we attract are the kind that already have a pretty good idea of what they want to do when they grow up. These aren't the, the kids that go just to the regular school and, and just, just plod through it and, and graduate and say, I don't know what to do. So usually they have an idea of what they want to do already. 
So the name changed from Warren County Bow Tech to Warren County Technical School. We offer the traditional trades such as uh, carpentry, metalworking, automotive, culinary, cosmetology, the type of trades that you know after graduation you usually move off into a job. But we do offer an, a program of STEAM, rather than STEM, STEAM um, programs with engineering, electronics, health sciences, theater arts, and broadcasting. <clears throat> so, being a volunteer, I had to get something out of this. So my agenda was to promote amateur radio as best I could within the school and within the community. So, didn't know what to do at first. So I got this new position and I knew I wanted to go in this direction, but I needed help. So what's the first phone call I make? My friend Carol. <laughs> We refer to Carol as the queen, because she's the queen of amateur radio youth activities. And over here is a meeting. Uh, Carol was gracious enough to make the trip to Warren County, and she met with um, our electronics teacher sitting at her side, uh, John Matropi, WA2SMA, as well as our administrator and myself. So we talked about all the different ways we can enhance, and Carol offered all sorts of resources to us. So if you're trying to promote amateur radio, that's your first phone call. <laughs> email. Yeah. Oh, email works too. So, what do I do? I go big. My first, my first task is I want to do an Aris contact. Not knowing what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, we, we filed our application. Um, the school was granted the opportunity, and we, we worked at it for probably almost a whole year. Uh, we introduced the um, space-related topics within the curriculum. We did projects with um, launching balloons and seeing, you know, and putting tags on them and giving, like, little rewards for people who, like, wrote back to tell them where the balloon landed, all kinds of the, the, the history classes were, uh, um, did a, a day where they talked about the space race with the Soviet Union. Um, we joked around that even the cosmetology class was going to come up with a perfect air, hairstyle for zero shape. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had an extremely successful event. Um, we had the we did it in the gymnasium. Four hundred students in the gymnasium, elected officials, members of the public, members of the press, and. I'm working the radio and all I can just, all that's running through my mind is that this has got to work. <laughs> and that was a great success. And the other thing was, is because this was so big and so, um, such a big effort for the school, that anything I asked after that point was easy. <laughs> so another thing we like to do is we like to promote school, uh, school club roundup. And we are, we're fortunate enough that we have a small station in the electronics lab. And uh, we have several students that have their license. Uh, <coughs> several extras, as a matter of fact. And we promote the opportunity, since it goes for a whole week, we promote the opportunity throughout the school. And we give any student an opportunity to get a pass out of whatever class they have <coughs> to come down and try to operate. Beyond the, uh, the engineering students and the electronics students, uh, we seem to be attracting a lot of the broadcast majors, which is not all that surprising, but it surprised me at the time. Something else we do, we do field day at the school. Uh, we, set up on a local, we set up with a local club called the uh, 721st Mechanized Contest Battalion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You may recognize us from our green shirts. We've also the ones that have been promoting all the youth activities, such as the uh, the pole climbing robot, the band in the bucket. So we work with a lot of kids already. So we decided to partner with the school. They let us use the athletic field, and uh, we advertise field day within the school. The electronics kids go out and hang up posters all over the all over the school, and we get kids showing up, and they enjoy the weekend there. So that's another way we reach out. Then there's the non-conventional methods. Um, thinking outside the box, I like to say. Uh, a 
again, as hamsters, <coughs> we're the original makers. We were the ones building stuff long before making ever became making. So it seems that anyone who has that same mindset, it's a real easy way to pull them into the hobby. Um, First Robotics has been very good to us as far as uh, a fertile ground. We've been able to pull in, um, like I said, the kids from several years ago that built the pole climbing robot to launch antennas. Um, seated over there is, uh, is another ham, uh, Dan, uh, K2 GBE, and he's just making some last minute wiring changes at a competition. Um, so you just gotta think think non-traditional. Think of other other ways that you know, other gateways for, for students. Something new we tried last year, Skills USA. Has anyone heard of that? Great. So Skills USA in, and I'm gonna have Luke talk more about that, but that was another kind of making construction kind of um, organization. So we figured we would try to, to branch off into that. And uh, Luke, can I come up now? <coughs> Hi, I'm Lucas Pearson, KD2ISP. I've been registered for one year. I got my license at Dayton, actually. I'm from Warren County, New Jersey, Powhatan and I'm a senior at Warren County Technical School for Engineering. I will be attending Virginia Tech in the fall of 2016. Call some hokies out here. So, American industry was and still is the envy of the world. Unfortunately, a problem is growing, and that problem is a skills gap. American industry needs skilled workers, but there are now less and less to be found. The average skilled worker in America is 56 years old, and about 10 million new skilled workers will be needed by 2020. We need new engineers, electricians, welders, etc. Luckily, there is an organization to address this problem called Skills USA. Some of you might know it formally as VICA. So, um, Skills USA defines itself as a partnership of students, teachers, and industry working together to ensure America has a skilled workforce. And uh, I'm a member, and he's a member down there, and that explains the get up. So, Skills USA attempts to fix this problem by providing competitions in students' perspective fields. Uh, some of my favorite ones are being heard up there. That's, uh, someone actually welded that together instead of raising the flag at Iwo Jima. And they have things like costume makeup, 3D printing competitions, and they're all really interesting competitions. Okay, so my competition is called Engineering Technology and Design. It's a team of three, and they create a prototype, and they display it to a team of judges with some sort of display, which is down there. During the presentation, uh, students are judged on their performance as a team, and their prototype itself is judged on things like material selection, uh, use of 3D modeling, aesthetics, and ergonomics. And this was the first time anyone from our school ever did this competition, so we were really unsure of what to expect. Now I'd like to invite Nick up to talk about what we actually did for our competition. said, I am Nick Groshevs, K2 HBR, and I'm from White Township, New Jersey, uh, from uh, Warren County, New Jersey. Uh, I'm a senior at Warren County Tech, and I'm also an engineering major, and I plan on attending uh, Worcester Polytech in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts uh, for the fall of 2016. Uh, I have been licensed for a little over a year, and um, I'm a tech currently. Um, public service was the main uh, goal of this project. We wanted, when we're investigating this skills project, we didn't want to redesign anything. We wanted to make something new and innovative that helped the community. We began emailing local nonprofits in our area 
and uh, see if they had any problems or they wanted a specific tool or they had uh, that they couldn't solve on their own. And uh, we emailed places like uh, dog shelters and uh, uh, we emailed some uh, local emergency service area, or emergency services like uh, EMTs and stuff like that. But that didn't really turn up with anything. Uh, we found out that simply asking wasn't going to work and I needed an idea to come to me. Uh, at my monthly ham radio meeting, I overheard KP, uh, Kevin Murray in the back, and my father talking. KP was talking about how he struggled at a search and rescue op for, uh, uh, so, so that was over uh, 50 miles away from their hometown. Uh, the team forgot to bring uh, the base radio and antenna, and they were forced to use relays. And this severely limited the team's range in the already horrible conditions. Uh, I asked to attend a meeting to see if I can gather any information or if we can make a product for them. And he one upped me and he gave me the chance to attend a practice op. And that is where that photo comes from. Um, while attending this practice op, we were forced to use relays. And Kevin was our relay, and that's him stuck in the rain, uh, hungry down the tree there, and that's me manning the base radio all comfortable and dry. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, I remember Kevin saying how good what Viker was, and I had a light bulb moment. What if we could eliminate the use of relays by equipping uh, each member of the search and rescue team with like their own powerful base radio and antenna? Uh, I told Kevin about the skills competition, and he was ecstatic, and we began tossing around ideas immediately. And um, he had he had some specific requirements though. So. So Kevin Murray, he gave us some requirements for designing our antenna. He wanted to be a twin lead, 300 ohm. There we go. Yeah. Twin lead, 300 ohm J pole antenna. He wanted it to be able to easily fold into a bag. He wanted a simple, portable design, and he wanted multiple ways of reaching the heights, and would also have to be very easily reproduced. I designed the folding aspect of the antenna. I went through a lot of ideas when designing it, such as like uh, collapsing together, folding obviously, and snapping together. But I decided on folding because again, it would fit the theme of being easily reproduced. So the main inspiration for our antenna is tenfold. As you can see there, it's uh, on the left corner. Um, they have a bungee cord in the middle that allows them to stay together when not in use holding up a tent, and that's also what our antenna has. The part I designed is the coupler, I call it. It's uh, down on the bottom left hand, and it simply just keeps the antenna rigid when in use. The next part we have is called the clip connector, which I'm going to describe. Um, the job of the clip connector is to keep the antennas or the base uh, PVC sections together while in the storage form. Uh, I got the inspiration for this piece after looking at an extension cord. You see a small notch at the end of an extension cord after you wrap it around your uh, your arm, you just clip it on the end and then you can hang it up on a hook or something like that. And we took that into consideration when designing this. Um, and there is two on the antenna right now, and one of them clips to the uh, bottom section, the other one clips to the top section. And we also had to focus on versatility. That was very important for this. We had two main ways for versatility. Uh, the first was the top cap, which holds the entire antenna inside the assembly, but it also has a small loop on the top, so you can tie a rope to it and throw the rope over a branch and quickly hoist it over a tree which is very uh, helpful if you're in a search and rescue scenario, which the antenna was made for. And we also have the thread adapter. Um, the thread mount and has standard threads inside of it, which are 3D printed, and is play it can be placed on a painter's pole or a broomstick for quick, easy use. Now this is available for when having a rope wouldn't be useful, 
uh, maybe you're in a parking lot or you're in a more plains area and you need to help find somebody and there's no tree to, or anything to hoist over, this is perfect to use. And we went through many concepts when designing this. Uh, the, the far left is the final prototype that we have and the first one is uh, the second from the right is um, just that was on a, a broomstick and it fit the dimensions of a smaller PVC pipe. So there is that. And then we also have the final products. The final products have a total of seven 3D printed parts on each and it takes about 30 minutes of assembly minus uh, printing time and stuff like that. Depends how well or how efficient your 3D printer is. Um, we also had, oh here's a quick video before we go on. State competition was held at Somerset County Technical School in Somerset Tech, New Jersey. I remember getting up at 4.30 in the morning to get to our competition this time, on time. And we weren't exactly as well prepared as we would like to be, but we had a good feeling about our product. Our main competitors that day were a self-stirring pot and a kinetic <laughs> cell phone charger. But we managed to take home the gold. The national competition was held in Louisville, Kentucky in the Study <coughs> Exhibition Center. I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but that building is huge. It has over a million square feet. My two main memories that day are running around playing with our antennas in the building and the abundance of food. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at the national competition, we were more well prepared, but we faced some formidable competitors 
everyone there had a good uh, invention, and some of them were pivoting shovels, homebrew video game system, and water filtration systems. Uh, two of the three judges we had were ham radio extras, and that was amazing to see the network of ham radio. And even though we tried our best, uh, we managed to only get fourth place nationally, which was kind of bittersweet. This year, we competed in the contest again. We designed a beacon wedge for firefighters. We called it O Wedge. Um, it was designed to reduce line of duty deaths in firefighters, and we placed first place in nationals in um, state competition again. And use what we learned last year to hopefully uh, place at the national competition. Wish us luck in the finals. And that's the end. Uh, thank you. If anyone has any questions, you can ask. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.